Hello my lovelies and welcome to my channel. Today, Entitled People. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. Today I will be reading two stories. The first one, A Very Special Lady, posted by user Kiara TW and Entitled Neighbour Throws a Party, posted by user Many Books 91 I hope you enjoy. This happened just a week ago at work. I had the luck of getting the opening shift that week, which meant I had to report in at 7am, half an hour before we officially opened the clinic at 7.30am, to do set-up and prep work. I usually didn't mind. Less people and quiet time to myself as I prepared the equipment needed. I had barely begun when this lady came in and asked, Hi, can I see a doctor? I shook my head. We don't begin registration until 7.30, ma'am. Please take a seat and wait. She did half a bit in response, but took a seat behind another early patient and began striking up a conversation with them. I overheard words about cough, lurgy positive, fever, but didn't pay closer attention. Then, when I was done, I returned to the inside office, guided a newbie out to complete setup at 7.20am, showed her the ropes, what to do, usual reporting time, what not. And the lady asks again, Are you guys opening soon? 7.30 sharp, ma'am. Not all the staff are in yet, I replied. Yet another huff. 7.25, another colleague arrives and begins checking over our setup, discussing any possible changes as she did so. The lady was growing impatient. It's just three minutes. Surely you can let us in now. My colleague replied, Ma'am, you will have to wait. Truthfully, sometimes we do let patients in one or two minutes early. But my colleague had already heard my grumbling about her and wasn't in the mood to be nice. Finally, 7.30am, and she was the first to register before setting off to the doctors for her lurgy-type symptoms. I thought that was the end of it and went back to assisting my other colleagues, only to walk out to my manager at 8.15, talking to that same lady. And she was displeased. Your doctors should know better than to ask me how many days of MC do you need? He's the doctor. He should know. Manager commented something in response, but I was busy with another case so I couldn't eavesdrop. Then she raised her voice again. I told him I'm a teacher for special needs students. I deserve at least one week, MC, but he gave me five days only. I've been lurgy positive for eight days, and he expects me to go back to work after five days? What if I infect my vulnerable students? Ma'am, the doctors are doing their best as well, my manager starts. Well, he clearly doesn't know what he's saying. I want another doctor. This doctor is useless. Out of curiosity, I peeked into the patient's digital chart as the lady kept up her rant. In it, the doctor noted the lady had been feverish for eight days, lurgy positive throughout. The lady had asked doctor how many days of medical leave she would be getting, so the doctor replied with five. She had grown agitated then, talking about how she's been sick for so long and needed more days to recover. So the doctor had explained to her that the five days were for her to self-monitor her symptoms. If no signs of recovery, she could always return for extension. She didn't like that. She went into her spiel about being a teacher and even mentioned how her friend could get one to two weeks of medical leave from another doctor. When she realised doctor stood firm on the five days of leave, which was also because government lurgy regulations stated five days as a standard, she had apparently stormed off without said MC or medication and made her current complaint. I guess my manager stood firm about the doctor's orders because the lady soon left with a scowl on her face. When I gossiped about this case to my colleague later on, they remarked, so why didn't she see that doctor that her friend saw for the two weeks of medical leave? Perhaps said doctor doesn't exist. But seriously, that was one special lady, all right. Well, my friends, this lady sounds really sus. I think she's already taken some time off 
without a medical certificate and now expects that time plus her next five days covered. I'm sorry, people like that really annoy me and all I can say is sucks to be you, lady, to the next story. I was really hoping my neighbour would settle down, but here we are. Though this story has a satisfying ending, I think. This just happened last night, and I'm still a bit tired, so I'm sorry for any spelling mistakes. Our neighbour had been quiet for a while, and my SO and I thought maybe she finally realised she couldn't control the whole building. One of her cars was parked in her spot, and the other was parked on the street behind my SO's car. Nobody's washing had been ripped off the line. No new notes were stuck to doors. Until yesterday. As we are the bottom unit slash apartment, we have a side door that opens out onto the shared yard. I think the only time I use that door is to air the place out or as a shortcut to hang washing out. Sorry. Anyway, yesterday we were going about our day when we saw Entitled Neighbour and a few other people setting up tables and chairs in the yard. No big deal. It's shared space. A few minutes later there's a knock on the side door and it's her. S.O. opened the door. It's a glass sliding door, so she could see us, so we couldn't pretend we weren't there, and did the usual greetings. She told us she was having a party, and we needed to move our wooden planters off her patio, because she needed the space for her barbecue. Uh, no. Firstly, the patio is our space, not shared space, and secondly, they sit right next to the glass door so I don't want some random looking into my living room all night while they are cooking. Esso reminded her she doesn't own the building, and we wouldn't be moving when one of her friends asked, WTF she doing? They had already set up the barbecue in the yard. She huffed and walked off without saying anything to us, and we thought that was it. It was not. A few hours go by, and we ended closing the curtains for privacy. Whoever designed this building didn't really keep privacy in mind for a detail, but anyway. We can hear talking, laughing and cooking, the usual sounds of a backyard party, when there's another knock on the door. I was cooking dinner, so my SO answered it again. This time, it was one of her friends, saying she had to use the bathroom. An entitled neighbour told her to just knock on our door, instead of walking upstairs. Esso politely told her sorry, but she couldn't use ours, and she apologised for knocking and intruding. Not even two minutes later, there's banging on the door, and by now my SO is PO'd. He opened the door, and entitled neighbour started to lay into him about how dare he expect her guests to go all the way upstairs, and that he needed to apologise to her and keep the door open for her guests. So my SO is usually a calm guy, very easy to talk to and rational, but in that moment he lost his sh**. He told her to f off and stop bothering us, to get her head out of her butt, and she can't lay claim to everything she sees. Our bathroom wasn't hers to use, her guests could use her bathroom, and if she knocked on our door again, he would call the police for harassment. At this point, one of her friends came over and told Entitled Neighbour she needed to leave us alone and stop bugging us before apologising and telling us to have a good night. We expected the party to be loud and go on all night, but it actually wrapped up pretty early, about 1am I think. This morning when I got up, everything had been cleaned up from the yard, but our planters had been knocked over. Joke's on her because we hadn't planted anything in them yet and most of the soil in there was used cat litter. I use potting mix as cat litter because it's cheaper. So now she can smell my cat's old Wow, that woman certainly is entitled. I must apologise to you, friends. I haven't posted yesterday and the day before. My throat actually was feeling like the bottom of a budgie cage. Pretty rough. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. Um, if you did, please let me know in the usual way. And until next time, so long, farewell, pip pip, cheerio, much love, and bye.